this is the final lecture on this introduction to electromagnetic theory course. You have learnt in this course about electrostatics, about magnetostatics, then we came to the dynamics part and you learnt how electric and magnetic fields can give rise to each other through when they change with time. We have also learnt how they sustain each other and give rise to uh, a disturbance that can radiate that, that can propagate and that is called radiation. No course on EM theory is going to be complete until we see how this radiation arises. So, in this final lecture I am just going to give you a qualitative description of how electromagnetic radiation arises. You have all heard in your 11th 12th grade in particular in connection with Bohr's model that any radiate any accelerating charge radiates and therefore, in Bohr's model an atom would be unstable if that charge moving in the orbit radiated because it is accelerating. So, what I want to show in this lecture is how acceleration of charge leads to radiation. To start with let us see why a non accelerating charge should not radiate. So, let us look at a charge q point charge q moving with constant velocity v which is such and I am going to focus in this lecture on magnitude of v being much 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 less than c which is the speed of light. In one of the previous lectures or assignments you have seen that a moving charge creates a magnetic field around it. So, this charge q which we take to be positive suppose it is moving in the right direction it will have a b field which is coming out on top and going in at the bottom and as you go away the field magnitude becomes smaller. Nonetheless this is what it is and to a good approximation I can take the E field to be being radially out if this is for V magnitude much 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 less than C. So, that what you notice is that the pointing vector S is such that it does not take the power away and therefore, it does not radiate. There is another very cute way of looking at it and that is this. If this charge is moving with velocity constant velocity v, let us attach a frame to this charge. Let me make this frame by this red line x, y, z and this frame therefore, is also moving with constant velocity v and here is my ground frame. So, with respect to this ground frame this frame is moving with velocity v. However, in this red frame which is moving frame the charge is at rest and therefore, the electric field due to this charge is going to be radially outward and there is no magnetic field and therefore, no radiation. So, let us write this no radiation in the moving frame. However, this frame is moving with respect to the ground frame with a constant velocity and therefore, it is an inertial frame and the physics in the two frames has to be therefore, the same and this therefore, implies if there is no radiation in the moving frame. this implies there is no radiation in the ground frame also and thus charge moving with constant speed does not radiate. Let us now show how an accelerating charge would give out radiation. So, now what we want to show is an accelerating charge gives out 
radiation. If you continue doing physics or an advanced course in electromagnetic theory, you will see a mathematically rigorous derivation of this through potential and all that. Then here the description is going to be very, very qualitative. So, let us for this understand two key properties that I am going to use of radiation. In a radiation, the electric field E and the magnetic field B are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation. We have seen that in the past two lectures. Number two, if there is a point charge radiating, suppose with power p, as you go farther and farther away, the same power starts going through a larger and larger area and power per unit area is nothing but the pointing vector, which is proportional to E square. So, the pointing vector or power per unit area from a point source of radiation is proportional to 1 over r square, where r is the distance from the point source. And this implies that the E field is proportional to 1 over r. Let us see it pictorially. If I have a point source, let us make it with green out here, then at a distance r, if the radiation is going out this way, I would have an E field either going as shown here or going into the paper. In other words, it is perpendicular to the direction of propagation and E will be proportional to 1 over r. If I can show that an accelerating charge gives me a propagating disturbance which goes as for which the E field is 1 over r and is perpendicular to the direction of propagation, I have shown that the radiation exists. So, let us see that. Suppose this charge at rest, I take a charge at rest, this has electric field, I will make 3 or 4 lines lines like this. And this E field is nothing but q over 4 pi epsilon 0 r square, where r is the distance. And this field is radially out. Now, suppose, so this is step 1. Step 2, give an impulse of very short duration tau to this charge, so that it gains a velocity v. And again, we are going to focus on the cases where the magnitude of velocity is much, much, much less than the speed of light. So, this charge now is moving with speed v, with velocity v. It has been given this uh, tau impulse for very short duration for time tau. Let us see what happens now. So, here was this, this charge initially at rest and its field was going out like this. I am making it radially out. And this has been given a kick, so that in time t it reaches here, things are little exaggerated, it reaches this distance v t. Now, in this same time t, since the charge has changed position, the field also has changed and v is very small, the field is going to be radial 
about this position of charge. Let me again make the same lines that I made for the charge when it was at rest. However, this cannot be radial all over the space or however it cannot be this red field all over the space because this propagation is a finite speed of uh, light. So, this will become radial the red field will extend only up to a distance c t. So, this distance is c t. After that for some period tau I do not know what the field is, but certainly need not be radial. The reason is very simple. During tau that small time period the charge was accelerating and therefore, I cannot actually attach an inertial frame to it. If I could attach an inertial frame to it, I will see the field in that and say similar field exists in the you know, ground frame, but I do not know. I certainly know because when it is moving with velocity v, I certainly know that I can attach a frame to the charge in which the field is radial and since velocity is small it remains radial in the ground frame also. I certainly know that outside this c tau field is radial again this in between the two regions which, which I am showing through, through this green I do not know the nature of field all right. So, let us now make this picture again. So, I have this black at rest charge and up to a distance c t and little beyond that after that the field is radial all over the place. Let us do it on this side also. So, I will make this circle there is one circle like this around it there is another circle like this outside the outer circle the field is radial. this side also. This distance between the two circles is c times tau, where tau is that small duration time during which I gave the impulse. After time t the charge particle has come here this distance being v t and now the field will be radially out from this, but only up to this inner circle because that information that it has moved reaches only this far. In between something else happens. Now, notice that in Maxwell's equation we assume that divergence of E integrated over a surface is equal to q over epsilon 0 which is Gauss's law this remains invariant no matter which frame I am in. So, the number of lines if I take number of lines representing the charge remains the same outside and inside. So, the only way they can be there therefore, added is that I connect them through this green field out here, green field out here, green field out here, green field on this side. So, the field lines are looking like this. Let me make them in one color clearly like this here goes out goes out comes here like this goes out and goes out. Similarly, here it goes up goes out like this and goes out and you see this is the field line structure. Field on this side is like this again when I looked at the field inside it was radial field when I was sitting at the charge moving with constant velocity again whatever I saw in that frame for a small velocity I can say the field is essentially the same in the ground frame also in between I do not know the only thing I know is that the number of lines should remain the same outside and inside and therefore, this is the blue lines show the way the only way I can connect them only simplest way we can connect them, but if I connect them like this something interesting happens in this region between two circles here you see the blue line has a component which is perpendicular 
to the direction the serial direction. So, what is happening now as we gave the acceleration the impulse this is a small region which is of width c tau started propagating out with a speed c. So, there exists a region corresponding precisely to those times when the charge accelerated that has the field perpendicular to the radial direction or perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So, we have established that there exists a field in those times when the charge is accelerating which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Next we want to show that it is 1 over r and therefore calculate the power radius.